Hello everyone, John here from rchelicopterfun.com. Welcome to part two of our little uh, RC connector uh, soldering video series. Today we're going to be going over tinning, what it is, why it's so important. It really is, you know, out of all the videos here, this is pretty much the most important skilled one to learn is proper tinning because it's really 75% of an RC connector soldering job. If you don't have your tinning right, uh, you're going to have a compromised connection on your uh, connector. And I'm just going to show you, you know, one main reason you have to know how to do this is because most ESCs, when you buy them, they don't have connectors on them. Either the, you know, the connector for the battery uh, that plugs into the battery or, you know, the bullet ends that you have to solder on for your motors, either on the ESC or the motor. Uh, a lot of times batteries don't come with connectors. This one's got one on, but a lot of times when you buy a battery they don't, or you might need to change it uh, because you use a different connector type on your ESCs. And of course, as connectors are used, they get burnt and pitted, and you eventually do have to replace them. So, you know, if you're into any type of electric RCing, uh, soldering is so important to learn. It's a great skill to learn. Um, most RC wiring is it's the silicone high flex stuff really it's really nice stuff to work with um, it, it bends really easy it doesn't matter what the temperature is it's you know the insulation sheathing on it is a silicone it's not a stiff PVC um, you know this is the same type of wiring you see on uh, you know test meters the test leads on digital multimeters that type of thing um, and they can withstand many many flex cycles without breaking uh, very fatigue resistant and that's obviously because these things do see a lot of flex cycles you're plugging them in and out of your model uh, you're plugging them in and out of your charger the balance wiring on good packs will also be high flex silicone wiring so uh, that's primarily what silicone high flex wiring is and you'll see it on everything your ESC's your batteries basically everything um, what makes it hard to work with is uh, is why it is so flexible are the number of strands in it. Here's two, I'm just going to show you two. These are both uh, 12 gauge uh, wiring, or nope, sorry, 14 gauge. Um, this one here is just standard automotive stranded wire, PVC jacketed. You can tell it's a little bit thinner. That's uh, the actual gauge of the wires. This is still 14 gauge, but the sheathing is a lot thinner so the wire looks thinner and here's some silicone stuff and just by looking at it I think you can appreciate what the difference is the silicone uh, high flex stuff it's just got hundreds and hundreds of very you know they're hair thin little wires you know and when they're that thin they can flex back and forth back and forth you know a million times without breaking whereas the high you know the thicker the wire the less times it can uh, bend back and forth before it fatigue cracks. So that's the main difference. Now, what makes that a little bit of a challenge working with this stuff is tinning it is a little bit harder because it takes, a, it takes more heat and more solder to penetrate all those strands and that's what you're doing when you're tinning. You're, you're coating all those little strands of wire with solder so they're held together and then when you are hooking them up when you're soldering them to your connector, the idea is you've got a little dollop of solder on your connector. Um, this, this will be well tinned, saturated, and then you just apply the heat and you melt it into the little puddle and that's it, you're done. You've got a super solid connector then. You don't have to apply heat too long, which is bad for all connectors because it overheats the pin and then the pin will, get, will soften the plastic or the nylon it'll move around, it can become loose or it will become out of alignment. Um, so the less amount of heat you can apply to a connector as you're soldering the wire onto it, the better. And again, tinning, so important. So we're just going to do some examples here of tinning. I'm going to do a really poor tinning job first so you can get an idea of what that's all about. We're using a nice rosin core solder, kind of like I described on the first part when we were going over all the uh, different materials and equipment for soldering. I'm using my heat gun, this is a big wire right here, this is a, what, 10 gauge. Now first I'm going to do a really poor solder job. So 
just gonna uh, get the gun heated up and we're gonna go and we're gonna apply solder all the way around this this wire you know yeah it looks pretty good it looks well saturated it's uh you know there's solder all the way around it however let me just get my clippers out i'm just going to cut the end of it off I'll just flatten it out or round it back out now, i don't know if you can see this hopefully this will show up but yes the outside of the wires are well tinned but none of the inside ones are you know the inside stuff is all still just all loose okay so we didn't we didn't have good penetration there the solder didn't penetrate all the way into the wire so let's do this again properly I'm just going to chop that end off again. we'll strip it and usually when you strip this stuff, it kind of frays out because, you know, it's being, there's so many strands in here. So I usually give it a little twist. And that'll help hold those strands together as you're applying the solder. I'll do this again. Now what I'm going to do here, you'll notice the difference this time is I'm going to be holding the gun onto it longer. And this is allowing the solder to really penetrate. The heat is migrating deep inside all those strands. And it's penetrating a lot further. And um, you'll notice that when you see this one, there, there's not nearly as much solder on the outside. It looks like it's, there's actually less solder, but it's all wicked in. And another way to tell if it has wicked in a ways, still hot, I'm just going to hold it. If you try to bend the wiring and it bends right at the end of where you've soldered, you know the solder hasn't wicked uh, all that far in. But here you can see it's bending a little ways back, maybe about a quarter inch back into the insulation. And that's, that's telling you that the solder has wicked you know, back into the insulation as well. And when you are soldering, um, Another tip here, you've probably seen videos or read that the idea is you apply, you know, whether it be a soldering gun or, a, you know, an iron, that, you know, you hold, you, you, that you hold the uh, iron to the component and then add the solder to the component. I can tell you right now, I could hold this iron onto here all day long, a dry tipped iron or a dry tipped soldering gun and try to you know apply solder to the back side of it and chances are it would never it would never melt because you've got a dry tip here and there's a very small contact surface contact area between the tip and the component and there's very little heat transfer from that small contact area so what you want to do uh, when you do solder I don't know if you're watching that but I was actually just clean this tip off I'm actually putting, I'm getting a little ball of solder on the tip and between the component. And then you've got this ball of solder, this liquid solder on the, between the tip and the component. And you've got a much greater area for the, um, for the heat to transfer. You know, you've got much, uh, much larger heat transfer area and you know, the heat will transfer into the component a lot quicker and a lot more efficiently. So anyways, now that we've done that one, I'm just going to cut this one and you'll see the difference. I can see that, but there's solder penetration right through. It's like a solid core now. And that's what tinning's all about. Now, and again, the idea is that for that is then you can just you know, you've, have, you've got solder on there, solder on the component, you just melt it in, you're good to go. Which we will be showing in all the uh, videos, but that is the main skill to get. Now, another little tip I'll do here. Here, let me just put more solder on here. 
show you another little tip that I uh, I do quite often. So if you've got if you got a really nice uh, we're going a little bit too uh, too excited here, getting a little too much on, but. If you've got a really, you know, if it's well saturated, you've got lots of solder on the on the wire, it may not fit into your pin anymore, your bullet pin, whether that be just standard bullet, like standalone bullets, or you know, bullet pins that are in like EC3 connectors, EC5 connectors. What you can do is I use a Dremel uh, rotary tool and I just put a sanding drum on it, just an ordinary sanding drum. And I'll, I'll just go around that uh, that wire. You know, you want to have glass, uh, you know, glasses or some kind of protective glasses on, and just knock the solder down and reduce the diameter of the wire so it will fit into the bullet. And you know, you can do that if the wire is slightly too big for your specific bullet connector. You know, it doesn't really matter if you're just, you know, if you're just shaving down the uh, the diameter right at the end. Uh, you're still going to have lots of current carrying capability. Um, so that's just another little tip I, I use. And yeah, use a so use a sanding drum because if you use like a grinding stone, you know, solder is very soft. It'll plug the stone right up, whereas it won't plug a uh, a sanding drum. So that is. Uh, that's what's involved in tinning a wire. It's uh, it's quite simple, but like anything, it takes practice. But it is the most important um, skill to learn in any of these videos. Tinning is the foundation of every video uh, that uh, is coming up on the connecting on the connectors, soldering to the connectors. Hope that helped everyone. See you in the next video.